Today I want to share with you 10 foods you should be buying at Aldi for your prepper pantry. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning how to be a modern pioneer in the kitchen, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, if you've been with me for a while, you know when I say 10 foods, I'm often going to share 10 categories. So I've got a lot of good information for you. Plus, in addition to the 10 categories I'm going to share, I've got a few bonus specialty items as well as some perishable items that I found at Aldi that were exceptionally good buys and I can't wait to share them with you. I also want to mention that if you open the description underneath this video, I'll list timestamps for everything that I'm going to cover so you can jump ahead whenever you want. Now today we're going to focus primarily on non-perishable foods that are great for stocking in our working pantry and in our prepper pantry. And if the term prepper pantry is new to you, all it refers to is an extended pantry where you put your backup food that you use to restock your working pantry when your supplies begin to go low. And what your working pantry is is basically the pantry that you access every day. And both the working pantry and the extended or prepper pantry are part of the bigger pantry system that we often refer to as the Four Corners Pantry. And the Four Corners Pantry just refers to all of those areas where we generally store food. Your working pantry for your non-perishables, your refrigerator, your freezer, and then your extended or prepper pantry for your backup non-perishable foods. And I have a very extensive playlist that has videos that show you how to create a prepper pantry, how to stock it with real food, how to do it on as little as $5 a week, and how to store the food so that you extend the shelf life to the maximum amount possible. And I'll be sure to link to that playlist for you either in the iCards or in the description below. And I'll also try to put as much information as I can in the first pinned comment because I know for some of you you've said that's easier to access. And one other thing I want to mention is that if you are at the beginning of your journey transitioning from what I often refer to as a processed foods kitchen where you buy a lot of things that are already prepared for you and you're trying to move to creating more of a traditional foods kitchen where you make a lot of things homemade, I have a pantry list. It's 36 pages long and it lists all the traditional foods that you want to consider stocking in your pantry. And it covers everything, the whole four corners pantry. And it's not just a list of foods, it contains a lot of information with links to recipes for how to make many of the foods homemade, as well as how to then use them in various recipes to create nutritious, nutrient-dense, wholesome meals. And even though I show you how to make a lot of things homemade and I teach you how to home can foods and how to dehydrate foods and these are all things that you can have in your Four Corners pantry, I also think it's important to have backups. So even though maybe you grow your own carrots or you buy them in bulk at the farmer's market and you home can them, or maybe you home can your peaches, or maybe you make your own spaghetti sauce, all of these things are wonderful. However, it is important to have backups of these in case your homemade items run low. Because the last thing you want to do is run out of food. So periodically, I like to show you how I shop at various grocery stores to find good bargains on real foods. I try to find foods that are as simply made as possible with the least ingredients and are the least processed. So I finally went shopping to an Aldi and I found some great buys and I'm going to go over all these foods with you and I'm going to share the prices. And I was really impressed with some of the bargains that I found because in some cases, some of these things cost half what they would at my local grocery store. Now, before we go over all these items, I want to mention three things to you about shopping at Aldi if you're new to going there. Number one, make sure you bring 25 cents with you, a 25 cents coin, because you need to use that to release your shopping cart. Now, when you return your shopping cart, you'll get the 25 cents back. Number two, Aldi's doesn't give free shopping bags. Now, they have them to sell. They're brown paper bags, at least the one that I went to. But you want to bring your own bags so that you can save money. 
And number three, you really need to watch what price is ringing up when your items go down the conveyor belt at checkout. Because sometimes the price that you saw listed isn't necessarily the price that's going to show up on the cash register. So you may want to have your camera handy, the camera in your phone handy to take pictures of what you're putting in your cart and what it cost, or just keep a little notepad and write it down so that you make sure everything matches up. Because sometimes things are put on clearance or it's like what they call an Aldi deal and the price is reduced. And maybe the cash register just hasn't been updated yet, depending on when that reduction was made. So you really want to keep an eye on that. Now the first category that I want to talk about are baking items. Now what I've got here is baking powder, baking soda, and I bought two types of yeast. Now I didn't buy any sugar and I didn't buy any flour, and there are reasons why. Now they did have a variety of sugars. They had organic sugars, they had brown sugars, and they also had just plain old white sugar that was in the paper packaging. But it was as hard as a rock, so I passed that up. They also had flour, all-purpose flour, and it was $1.56 for the package. However, it was bleached all-purpose flour, and I really like to get unbleached all-purpose flour. I found just from experience that if I'm using that to feed my sourdough starter or make sourdough bread, I find the unbleached all-purpose flour works better. And there really wasn't any savings because you can get unbleached all-purpose flour also for $1.56 for the same amount at Walmart. But the baking soda, the baking powder, and the yeasts were a good buy. Now the baking soda was 60 cents, so that was a fair price. And the baking powder was 99 cents, and this was a good buy because the last time I was at Walmart, baking powder in the same size can has gone up to $1.12. And each of these packages of yeast was 89 cents, and you got three packages. And they had both the active dry and the instant rising, which people who use bread machines often like using this one. And you can put these in your freezer, and they'll last a long time, way past the sell-by date. Now, one thing I want to mention, because I do get a lot of comments on this, people will say, Mary, you seem to have a lot of food. Your pantry must really be well stocked. And my pantry is well stocked. But often, when I'm buying foods like this, and especially varieties, like having a fast rising and an active dry yeast, is because I'll be putting together blessing bags that I'll drop, if, or drop off at my church that the church then distributes to people who are in need of food. So whenever you're shopping, if you're picking up a few extra cans or something, uh, it's nice to get a little variety and then you can pass it on to your food bank or your church, whatever the case may be, especially these days because there are a lot of people who need help. Next, I wanna talk about some breakfast foods. At Aldi, I found these old-fashioned rolled oats for $2.55, a very good buy, very comparable to Walmart. I also found these what I call kind of fancy cereals. Uh, they're organic and they have all kinds of very nutritious ingredients in them. And these can be great for a quick breakfast with some milk, raw milk, all the better if you have it. But I was really impressed with the price of these because they were just $2.99 a box. And I gather maybe Simply Nature, I noticed there was a lot of Simply Nature in Aldi, and I don't know if that's kind of their store brand, the way our local HEB has Hill Country Fair and things like that. But this price was $2.99, and that is about half uh, the cost of some of these fancy specialty organic cereals at my local grocery store that some can sometimes can be six, seven dollars a box. So for $2.99, I just thought this was fantastic. And they had coconut chia, if you like chia seeds, and this one had pumpkin seeds and flax. And I can't say enough about how important it is to keep old-fashioned rolled oats in your pantry, especially during these times when we need to really stretch our budgets. They're very affordable, and you can even get them organic, still very affordable, and you can use them in so many ways as a meat extender and just a general meal extender. And I have a video where I talk about 10 different meal extenders, and one of them is oatmeal, and I'll be sure to link to that video uh, because it really shows you how to save money and stretch your meals, but without decreasing the quantity of food you're serving so nobody leaves the table hungry. 
So be sure to keep some old fashioned rolled oats in your pantry. And I think no matter where you buy them, they're usually very affordable. Category number three are fruits and fruit juices. I thought that these canned goods were really a good buy. This fruit cocktail, which is packed in 100% fruit juice, that's what I always look for. I prefer that they not be packed in any type of sugary syrup or even worse, high fructose corn syrup. I really try to keep that out of my kitchen. But these were uh, packed in 100% fruit juice and fruit cocktail is always fun. I think especially, at least in my memory, if ever my mom had this, it was like a special treat, you know, when we were kids. And so I think that what's nice about having this in your pantry is if you've got some oatmeal, you make up some oatmeal, and if you're out of fresh fruit, you can open a can of this and put, uh, put this right on top of your oatmeal, maybe a little drizzle of honey. It's just delightful. And this fruit packed in juice was only 99 cents. That's considerably less than what I would see at my regular grocery store. And these sliced peaches, they're also packed in juice and they were only 97 cents. So 99 cents, 97 cents, you can't go wrong. That's both of those are a very good buy. And this big jar of applesauce, which is almost three pounds of applesauce, was only $2.19. I have never seen this much applesauce at this price. I've seen it maybe for a little under $3, but not so close to basically $2. And having applesauce on hand is so useful. Yes, you can enjoy it as a snack, but it can also be used as an egg substitute if you're trying to conserve the eggs you have because applesauce works wonderful in baking for replacing eggs. So for every one egg you want to uh, reduce in a recipe that's maybe a quick bread or muffins, something like that, you can add in a quarter cup of applesauce. So having this on hand is always helpful and at $2.19, I can't imagine finding it less expensive anywhere. And then these cherries were sort of a treat, but I could not resist. These were like an Aldi deal, uh, which I'm learning now about Aldi. There are sort of the clearance items and then they have a aisle that uh, has all their deals, which are items that they may not be able to get again or that are just on a special price, I gather. And I thought these were a very good buy. These are dark Morello cherries. And now they are in a little bit of a sugar syrup, but it's sugar and it's not high fructose corn syrup and it's not a thick syrup. Uh, so I don't think there's a lot of sugar in here. Sugar is also listed as the last ingredient. It's just cherries, water, and sugar. And as you'll see, it is very watery. It's not a heavy syrup. And so if you wanted to get rid of that sugar, you could easily rinse these. But these would be very nutritious to put on top of oatmeal and maybe just have as a little, a little snack in a bowl with a little honey driz drizzled over it. Cherries are very rich in vitamins and minerals and all sorts of wonderful nutrients that are good for our health. Plus, they can help you sleep if you have trouble sleeping at night. It's often recommended having a few cherries and they contain uh, an ingredient that hopefully can help you drift off. And this is a 24 ounce jar of these cherries. And for $2.99, I can't imagine finding this uh, for less than that. This is almost, uh, to me, it's like a gourmet item. And I would imagine it being not just double, maybe even triple in price. Also in this fruit category, I found these fruit juices. Now these were $4.99 each, but they are a full 32 fluid ounces and they are 100% juice. None of these have any sugar in them. And juices like this are easily twice the price at my grocery store. And I picked out black cherry and I also picked cranberry. And then finally, I picked pomegranate. These are all exceptionally nutritious. And what's great about these, you can add a splash to some water or to some even sparkling water and make sort of your own gourmet flavored drink without having to spend a lot of money to do so. And you can sweeten it any way you want. You could use stevia if you want a zero calorie sweetener, you could use a little honey, whatever the case may be, but you control everything. What's also nice about these juices is that given that they're black cherry and cranberry and pomegranate, very rich in nutrients, uh, loaded with vitamins and minerals, 
But what's also important about this is that fruit juices like this, that first of all wonderfully are 100% juice and unsweetened, are rich in potassium. And anytime we can sneak a little potassium into our diet, all the better, because we tend to get a lot of sodium salt, and sodium and potassium work in the body to kind of balance one another. But we also, we often can have too much sodium and not enough potassium. So putting a splash of this in your water is a good way to start bringing some potassium into your diet. And I just love the idea of being able to make my own flavored waters because have you seen the prices of those at grocery stores? They're getting a little ridiculous and it's just water with some splash of flavoring in it. And by using juices like this to flavor your water, you're making your water basically nutrient rich because these are all three nutrient rich juices. So if you see these at your Aldi's, I highly recommend getting them. $4.99 at least compared to the prices at my grocery store for things like black cherry and an unsweetened cranberry and pomegranate juice are going to be a lot more expensive. Before we move on to vegetables, I just wanted to mention another nice thing about this applesauce, in case you were wondering, it does say unsweetened. So this is just applesauce. And all it is is apples, water, and some vitamin C used as a preservative. So you can't go wrong with that. Some nice, plain, unsweetened applesauce, just like the juices, no added sugar. And just like the canned fruit, just packed in juice, no added sugar. So you can really help pull back any sugar that you might be introducing into your meals. This is really one of the easiest ways to transition from, as I mentioned earlier, a processed foods kitchen to a traditional foods kitchen. If you've been buying canned fruit and syrup, just so start buying it in juice. You're pulling back on that sugar that you would otherwise be introducing into your meals. Start buying unsweetened applesauce. If initially, if say you're feeding children who have been used to eating a highly sweetened applesauce, you can just put a little honey on top. Honey's very nutritious and assuming that they're not infants, you always wanna be careful with honey and not feed it to infants. But school children, you have a little, one of those little bento lunch boxes and you can put some applesauce in, put a little drizzle of honey on top. I think that over time they'll come to really enjoy it. So be sure to add unsweetened applesauce to your pantry. Category number four are vegetables and somewhat related items to vegetables. The first thing I want to talk about are these mushrooms. Now mushrooms are a superfood. Regardless of what type of mushroom you eat, even these little button mushrooms that come in the can, they are all nutritious. And I have a previous video that's all about how to stock up on superfoods and they're nothing fancy. They're things that we can easily find at our grocery store, but we forget or maybe overlook the fact that they are highly nutritious, nutrient dense foods. And I'll be sure to link to that video if that's something that would interest you. But one of those superfoods in that video that I talk about are mushrooms. And they can be the very fancy ones that are very uh, gourmet, or they can just be little button mushrooms but I was very happy to find these because these were on sale when I was at Aldi. They were normally in the 70 cents uh, price range and they had been marked down to 47 cents, so I got two cans. And another buy that I thought was just terrific were these small cans, they're eight ounces though, uh, of tomato sauce. For 24 cents, I just thought this was fantastic because two of these would give you 16 ounces of tomato sauce for 48 cents. That is a really difficult price to beat pretty much anywhere. And overall, the ingredients in here are pretty basic. They've got tomatoes, they've got salt, and it says sea salt. They've got dehydrated onions, dehydrated garlic, it's sweet bell pepper. So it's very, very simple ingredients. So I just thought this was terrific. And for 24 cents each, I don't see being able to find this for less anywhere else. And whenever you're looking for a meal extender, Tomatoes are wonderful, whether they're tomato sauce or diced tomatoes or the whole tomatoes. Tomatoes can really help bulk up a meal, whether you're making a spaghetti sauce or whether, and maybe you're using a little less meat, you put in some diced tomatoes to kind of fill things out or using it in other capacities to thicken up a soup or a stew. They're very affordable generally and these were an exceptionally affordable buy and they help fill out your meal to give it a little more bulk. 
And in these times when prices of, for groceries are rising, we always want to look for things that are very affordable and can add bulk to our meals so that we can pull back and or cut back on some of your more expensive items like your ground beef or your chicken and so on and so forth. Now the other things I've got here are some sweet corn and over here I've got green beans. I got two types of green beans. I got the French style ones which are very nice and the regular cut green beans and I've also got carrots here. Now these were only 54 cents each. I have not been able to find canned vegetables for less than that so that was an outstanding bargain and the sliced carrots were 58 cents, so I don't quite know why they were four cents more, but even at 58 cents, you still can't beat that price. And I've got some sweet peas here, and these were also 54 cents, and I just thought these were such a great buy. Now, I know you may be laughing and saying, oh, but canned peas, I don't like canned peas. But I'm telling you, if you make these into what Nigella Lawson is famous for calling, and I think the British people in general for calling uh, mushy peas, they're delicious. I love it. All you do is mash them up with some butter and a nice helping of butter <laughs> and some salt or, or you can even whirl them you know, in the food processor if you've got one of those. And I find this a really tasty side dish. And something you need to keep in mind is that peas are high in protein. So you're getting some protein for 54 cents a can. I just think that's fantastic. And these can also come in very quick and easy if you want to make a pea soup. And you don't even have to worry about soaking and cooking your dried peas. You've got them right here. You just mash this up, add some water, maybe add a little splash of cream and you've got a wonderful soup. And another thing that I thought was a very good buy were these tomato sauces or pasta sauces. And these are both organic and one is tomato basil and the other is just a basic marinara. Now, can you make these homemade and can you make them in a very affordable way? Definitely. But as I said, having backup on, backups on your shelves is never going to hurt you. It's always going to be nice to have something in the event that you've not had a chance to make something homemade and you don't want to run out and you just want to throw a quick meal. I've got some pasta over here which we'll talk about in a minute and you just want to throw a quick meal together being able to open up a jar like this when you've not had a chance to make your own tomato sauce or you've just run out of what you may have made in home canned. You've got this. You pop it open you can have dinner ready in no time. And these were both each $1.95, which is a very good price for organic pasta sauce. Definitely less than what I would be able to find at my grocery store. Now they did have pasta sauce for less than $1.95, but it wasn't significantly less and it wasn't organic and it was packaged in plastic. So normally I'm not going to be a fuss budget about whether something's organic or not because I've, as I've shared with you in the past, I think it's very important to keep your stress low and not go above your food budget and buy what's in your food budget. However, the price difference was not significant. So I would recommend getting this because this is packaged in glass. So it was a little more, uh, but it's organic and it's not packaged in plastic like the other brand was. So I thought this was a good buy. Finally, in the vegetable category, I want to talk about salsa and vegetable broth. These I thought were both exceptionally good buys. Now we can certainly make our own vegetable broth. I think so many of us are making them from vegetable scraps and we really rarely need to buy vegetable broth and hopefully we don't need to buy bone broth either. However, again, like I said, just having a few backups on your shelf in case you run out of your homemade broths, this I thought was a very good buy. This was reduced and was on sale for $1.49 and it's a full 32 fluid ounces. And for $1.49 for organic vegetable broth, I don't think you can beat that. That's definitely going to be more expensive at my grocery store. And it's basically a vegetable broth made from carrots and celery and onions and some tomato paste. And that's a few other things. That's pretty much it. You know, it's really not... Uh, a long list of ingredients with a lot of things you can't pronounce, which you often see with these store-bought broths. Now they did have beef broth and chicken broth and they also had another category in similar containers that they were labeling bone broth. But I did think all of those had a little too many ingredients, the type that I wouldn't want to bring into my kitchen or even pass on to somebody else, so I forgo those. 
But this was pretty simple in terms of the ingredients, and for $1.49, I thought it was something good to have on the shelf. Now, when it comes to terminology, if you ever get confused by the terms of broth and bone broth or stock and wonder what the difference is, I have a video where I go over all three of those, and I'll definitely link to that if it's interesting to you. But this can be very handy to use in place of water when you're cooking rice or other grains. It can also be used as a base to start your soups or your stews or even as the liquid for making a gravy. And these salsas were also a very good buy. And I got both mild and medium because definitely, as I'd mentioned, a lot of this is going to go into blessing bags. And I always like to have a variety because you never know, you know, everybody has different tastes. So I like to provide a variety of foods. But this is 24 ounces. So that's one pound, eight ounces. So that's a lot of salsa. And these were each $1.55. And I thought that was an excellent buy. And what's nice about keeping salsa on your pantry shelves is I have a video where I show you how to make a very easy soup. You can literally pull it together in like 10 minutes because the salsa really serves as like the bulk or the base of your soup. You just take a jar of salsa, a couple of cans of black beans or whatever kind of beans you like. And depending on how many people you're feeding, you can add more beans and a can of corn and you add, you could use your vegetable broth. Sometimes I'll, I'll use my homemade chicken bone broth. If you want to get fancy with it, you can throw in a can of one here. I've over here, I've got the uh, chicken breast in the can. You can put in that right into the soup and it'll shred up and be very nice. You bring it up to a boil, let it simmer and it's ready to serve after about 10 minutes. And you can top it with a little grated cheese, a little sour cream, some tortilla chips, whatever you want. And I'll be sure to link to that recipe because that is so quick and easy. I love that for a fast dinner. And I just want to mention that for this vegetable broth, even though this was on sale, they had a lot of it. So hopefully if you visit your Aldi, they'll still have this in stock and it'll still be on sale. So $1.49 and $1.55, you can't go wrong. Category number five are condiments. And boy, did I find some really good prices on these things at Aldi. Well, first I wanna to talk to you about this olive oil. I have never seen olive oil for such a good buy. This is organic and it's extra virgin olive oil. And extra virgin olive oil is generally considered the best olive oil. And this bottle, which is 16.9 fluid ounces, was $4.29. I can't remember ever having seen a bottle of olive oil this big for $4.29. And it was organic. So definitely a great buy. Now, did they have extra virgin olive oil that wasn't organic for less? Yes, it was in the $3 price range. However, the reason I didn't buy that was the bottle was plastic. And just like with the spaghetti sauce, the pasta sauce, whenever I can get something in glass as opposed to plastic, I always lean to the glass. And when the price isn't significantly different, but I feel the quality is significantly different, I'll pay that little bit of extra money to get the better quality. And this is something that I've chatted with you a lot about in the past, that as you move along the continuum, so to speak, of getting closer and closer to having a traditional foods kitchen, and you're making more things homemade, you're gonna find you're saving more money and you have a little extra money in your grocery budget to put towards buying items that are a little better quality. So instead of buying the extra virgin olive oil that's not organic and in the plastic bottle, you can upgrade for, it was maybe, it was a little less than a dollar, so it wasn't a huge upgrade, but you can upgrade to getting the organic uh, extra virgin olive oil in a glass bottle. And sometimes you may be thinking, oh, well, it's a good buy. Maybe it's going to expire next month. Not the case at all. It actually is best buy or a sell by date through this time next year. So this is fresh at least for a year. And over here, I got a 14 ounce jar of organic coconut oil. And this was $4.99, which is a good price compared to what I would pay for a jar this size at my grocery store. 
But what I especially liked about this is that it's unrefined and it's cold pressed. This is a high quality coconut oil. And I especially liked that it was unrefined. Refined coconut oil, it's okay to use. Uh, they remove that sort of flavor of coconut and the aroma of coconut, but it's more processed. This, when it's unrefined, it's less processed. And I always try to find foods that are less processed. So I was very pleased to see this. And for $4.99, again, I really feel these are prices that can't be beat. Over here, I've got some mustards and I've got some ketchup. And these are also very good buys. This is a 20 ounce container of just your classic yellow mustard. And it was only 99 cents. And the ingredients are wonderful. It's water, vinegar, mustard seeds, salt, turmeric, and paprika. That's it. I mean, so natural. And turmeric is what helps to give it the yellow color, but turmeric is also an anti-inflammatory spice. So that's a wonderful way to get some turmeric into your diet. And then it's got a little paprika for flavoring. 99 cents, you, I mean, I, I can't find this for less. So I have to admit that, you know, as we're going through all of these things, I was very impressed with the prices at Aldi. Now these are sort of their gourmet mustards, yet they were only 89 cents. Now they do come in more expensive than just the plain yellow, but even for 89 cents, you're going to get 12 fluid ounces. This is a pretty big container of Dijon mustard. And I would be hard pressed to find Dijon mustard for 89 cents anywhere. And it'd be a little jar and it would be a couple of dollars. And the same with the spicy brown. Uh, this also was 89 cents and excellent buys, I think. And again, the ingredients are what I'm really impressed with because they're very natural, very similar to this. The Dijon adds a little uh, white wine into this mixture. And in here, they've just got some, again, this is very similar to this, but they must uh, grind the mustard seeds uh, not as smooth as they do with the traditional yellow mustard. Because again, you've just got watered, uh, you've got the water, the vinegar, and the mustard seed salt and turmeric. So there's no paprika in this one like there is in here, but uh, it's got that more ground, you know, the, where the mustard seeds are not completely ground. And so, and it must have a nice little, little zing to it. So I think that for the price, you can't go wrong. Now this ketchup, also the ingredients were very simple. I think they're, they're Simply Nature line, whether it's just Simply Nature or Simply Nature and organic, they do really tend to keep the ingredients very simple. So I like that. And as I said, this one was organic and this is a full 20 ounces. So that's one pound, four ounces. That's a lot of ketchup. And this was $1.49, which is a very competitive price for organic ketchup. And again, very simple ingredients, not unlike the mustard. This is tomato puree, and it's got some sugar, which you're going to have, you know, sugar, unless it's a sugar-free ketchup. Uh, there generally is sugar uh, added to ketchup, but that's okay. You know, it gives a nice little flavor, but you got your tomato puree, your sugar, your vinegar, your salt, organic onion powder, and that's basically it. Now I don't have any vinegar here. I didn't see any vinegar at Aldi. Maybe they had it, maybe I missed it, I'm not sure. Uh, but I've definitely found some good buys at Walmart for apple cider vinegar. So that's always something to keep in mind, especially if you're heading over there for the flour and the sugar. And I always like to keep a little store-bought apple cider vinegar on hand, especially when I can find one that's raw with the mother. That means that it's rich in the probiotics. Uh, but I have lots of videos uh, to share with you on how to make your own raw apple cider vinegar. And I walk you through the whole 30-day process. I also so show you how to make homemade citrus vinegars and homemade fruit scrap vinegars. So you can always make homemade vinegar. It's very easy to do and it's very affordable. But again, just like we've been talking about everything, having backups is always smart. So if, you, if in your travels you find some affordable uh, apple cider vinegar that's raw, certainly add that to your pantry. Category number six, rice and pasta. And you are really going to be surprised at what a good bargain I got on these. 
First off, I want to start out with this rice. Now this is parboiled rice. This is going to be very similar to Uncle Ben's. The Uncle Ben's rice and even the packaging looks kind of similar. The colors with the orange. And the nice thing about Uncle Ben's parboiled rice is that it goes through some sort of process or parboiled rice in general that helps retain a lot of the nutrients but also removing the bran and the germ to a certain extent so that it's more shelf stable and cooks like white rice, tastes like white rice, but actually has a few more nutrients retained in it. So it's an interesting process and I'm not really sure how it's done. And it was, I think it was like under a patent for a long time and maybe now uh, other companies are able to do these parboiled rices. But this was such a good buy. So to check my price, $3.39 and it's a five pound bag of rice. So I definitely couldn't pass that up. This was a real bargain. Now they did have other types of rice, but they were in smaller bags and the cost per ounce was considerably higher. This cost per ounce was much better buy. And that's often the case that whenever you can buy more or larger sized bags or boxes, whatever the case may be of whatever you're buying, it'll help decrease the price per ounce. So five pounds for $3.39. I felt this was a very good bargain. This would be oh, maybe closer to $6 or more in the name brand at my local grocery store. Now I can't wait to tell you about these pastas, but first we'll start with the boxed pastas. This is a rotini, it's called the curly cues, and then I have the penne. Now these were both 92 cents and they are one, one pound boxes, it's a kind of standard size. And that is equivalent to the price that you would pay at a Walmart. Now, a few weeks ago, pasta was about 82 cents a pound at Walmart. But then the next time I went, a few weeks had passed and I went back to Walmart and the price had jumped to 92 cents and the shelves were really cleared if you could even find any. But Aldi had a good selection and these were shapes that can sometimes be hard to find at least what was the case that I found at Walmart. Uh, so for 92 cents, I thought these were great. Now, interestingly enough, there are other pastas like their spaghetti, maybe their fettuccine, linguine, I can't 100% remember, but they were a little more expensive. They were over a dollar. Yet those same types of pastas, your spaghettis and whatnot, your long pastas, they were all still 92 cents at Walmart. So I think you can do a little better at Walmart if you also shop there. Uh, but these, I think, are definitely worth picking up. Now I have to tell you about these little packages of pasta. I love these. And I can often find these at my local grocery store as well, but they're a little more expensive. Sometimes I'll get lucky and find them on one of the end caps of the clearance sections. These are so handy for making a quick meal. At Aldi, these were only 28 cents a package. And I think at Walmart, they're 40 something a package and probably in that price range as well at my grocery store. So they're about half price at Aldi. And this is a good quality pasta. This is not something that's poorly made or, or of inexpensive or inferior quality. This is made from 100 semolina durum flour, which is how pasta should be made. And semolina is nutritious. It's more nutritious than all-purpose flour. It's the middlings, in essence, uh, what, what they're referred to, the middlings when uh, durum is ground into flour and sifted to make durum flour. And the semolina is what's left over. So there's a lot of nutrition. People don't realize there's a lot of nutrition in pasta that is made from durum semolina. So you always want to check and make sure the pasta that you're buying is made from durum semolina. And so I'm just so happy to find these and have, and even see, they say it right up here, 100% semolina. And I got two shapes, that's basically what they had. This sort of looks like broken up pieces of thin spaghetti uh, or capellini, it's very thin. And then these are little tiny shells. Now, let me talk to you about how to use these. Either of these can be quickly dumped into a soup, even if you had your vegetable broth, 
or if you had your homemade bone broth and you can just open a package of these. They are seven ounces, so they're not a pound, but really seven ounces of something like this is perfect for a soup. If you were adding in a pound, it really would be too much unless you were making a really big, big vat of soup. And even if you bought two bags of this, 28 cents and 28 cents, it's going to be 14 ounces, so a little under a pound, but still less than what you're going to pay for a pound of these more traditionally boxed pastas. And I just love these little broken pieces, you know, of kind of a thin spaghetti to put into a soup. Uh, it reminds me so much of those boxed soups that you can buy that you that has some little pieces of pasta like this that you add the liquid to. So it almost looks like a store-bought soup when you make it up. And for some people that can be a very good thing because when you are transitioning to a traditional foods kitchen and you're making more things homemade, sometimes if you can kind of make them look similar to what uh, people are used to coming from more packaged foods, the better. The transition is kind of a little easier. But I, I'm going to tell you about something you can do with those two that's very clever. But the same with these shells. You could do a mac and cheese with these. You could throw them into a soup, a, a stew. You know, it's just going to add body and some nutrition and, you know, help fill the belly uh, on not very much money. But these little spaghettis, what I love about this is where these little broken pieces of spaghetti. Uh, if you're familiar with rice aroni, which comes in the box, you know, if you've ever read the box, there's a lot of ingredients that we don't necessarily want in our traditional foods kitchens. But you can take something like this, and then you can take some of your rice, and you just saute it up in a frying pan in some butter and add, you know, a little seasoning that you would like, salt and pepper, maybe some dried herbs, whatever the case may be, and then add in your liquid. You could use your vegetable broth, you could use your chicken bone broth, beef bone broth, whatever you have. And you could add a little turmeric and that'll really pop up the color and make it look more like this, the uh, one that comes in the box. And you have your homemade rice aroni. Now, I've not done a video on that, but if that's something you'd like to see me make for you, uh, definitely mention that in the comments below, and I'll do a video on how to make a homemade rice aroni. That's something I learned from my mother years ago. That's what my mother used to do, because she was not one to buy very many. It was rare if she ever bought prepackaged foods, and there also weren't a lot of them, you know, in the 50s and 60s, and when there were, 1950s and 60s, and if there were, they were a little pricey, and she was always really watching the budget. But she would just do like a homemade uh, rice aroni. She would actually break up the spaghetti. Uh, but this is so convenient the way it just comes in the bag like this. And the nice thing about having pastas and rice on your pantry shelves is these are meal extenders. You can really stretch and expand a meal when you add things like this to your repertoire. You can take these and maybe a can of tuna or a can of chicken and make a tuna noodle casserole. There's a lot of things you can do that can be very filling yet are less expensive than some other options that you might be serving for a meal. But you're not sacrificing nutrition because you could even do something with a thin spaghetti, which is very nice in the spring. If you get the thin spaghetti or the capellini, which you should be able to find at Walmart. And then over here, which we'll talk about in a minute when we get to the proteins, you have a can of salmon and you can toss that with your fine pasta. The angel hair is especially nice. And even some canned vegetables or frozen vegetables, or if you have fresh vegetables, great. You toss that up, you've got some of your olive oil, or you could use some of your pasta sauce, and you have a very nice filling meal, perfect for springtime, and something that no one's going to go away hungry. You're going to get, you're going to have some protein, you know, from the salmon. You could even do something like that with chicken. Uh, if salmon is not something that you always enjoy. But whatever the case may be, using the pasta to be the bulk of the meal and have the protein be the smaller part of the meal, yet still there, is going to lower your cost of your meal, yet still be nutritious and keep everybody full. Category seven is hot beverages. Well, again, like with some of the other things I've shared, I couldn't get over some of the good prices I found for these things. These two bags of coffee were $4.89 each. 
I have never been able to find coffee, and it is ground coffee, it's not the beans, but I have never been able to find ground coffee for this lower price. Now this is a 12 ounce bag, and that's often what I'm comparing uh, this to in my grocery store or at some of the other stores that I've shopped at, like Walmart and whatnot. Often coffee now, rather than being packed in the 16 ounce bags like it used to be, I'm often seeing that the packaging is getting smaller and it's packaged in 12 ounce bags. Now sometimes the bag will look a little higher, but it's still just 12 ounces. But this is a wonderful Colombian roast. This is a medium roast. And then I got the Sumatra, which is a dark roast. Now they're not organic, but they are both fair trade certified. So I feel that this is quite good. And again, like with some of the other things, it's not like they're expiring soon. These are good well through 2023. Now I want to mention they also had some flavored coffees that were ground coffees like this, if you enjoy that. They had, I believe, a vanilla coffee, and I believe they also had a hazelnut coffee, which I think so many people enjoy. I tend to not buy those because they are artificially flavored, but I did want to let you know that they did have them and they were a fair price. Now I also like to keep instant coffee in my pantry, and I've got both decaf and regular. And the nice thing about coffee like this, this instant coffee, if you keep this sealed and don't open it, it's basically considered a forever food. And what that means is it simply never goes bad. And each jar is seven ounces and it was $2. Each jar was $2.89. And all you need to make a cup of coffee with this is a teaspoon of the coffee and some hot water and you're all set. So you're going to get a lot of servings out of this. And other than just being a forever food, the nice thing about keeping instant coffee on hand, it can kind of be part of your emergency pantry or your survival pantry, uh, because if you lose power, but you have one of those little cast iron stoves that I shared with you in my emergency pantry video, which I'll be sure to link to that if you've not had a chance to check that out. But if you've got something like that, and you've got a couple of little tea lights and a little uh, pot, uh, you can warm some water and you can enjoy a cup of coffee. And if you're like me and you like your coffee, it's nice to know that if, you're, if you are without electricity and you don't have a generator and you can't plug in your coffee pot, uh, you can at least, if you've got your little burner and your tea lights, you can warm some water and enjoy a, a cup of coffee made with instant coffee. And I know it's not as perfect as if you brewed it, uh, but when you like coffee and you need a little kick, especially in this case with the caffeine to get going, especially if it's cold and you have no power, uh, being able to have something comforting like this is really wonderful. I also picked up this box of tea bags and this is just simple plain black tea. And this is a hundred tea bags and it was only $1.85. And I think you can't beat that for tea. So I highly recommend this buy. Plus, they had these two green teas, and these were only 89 cents each. And they are 20 tea bags. There are 20 tea bags in here. And the ingredients listed here is just green tea. There's no fillers, there's no artificial flavors, nothing. Just green tea. For 89 cents for 20 tea bags, you can't go wrong. And the same with this. This is a green tea, also 89 cents for this box and 20 tea bags. And this is a lemon and ginseng green tea. And again, the ingredients are very simple. You've got green tea, of course. You've got some lemongrass, some lemon peel, and some ginseng. And so uh, for 89 cents, 20 tea bags, how can you go wrong? Category eight, protein. Now you may laugh and I may sound like a broken record when I say this, but I have to tell you, I was really impressed with not only the prices of these items, but the quality of these items. First, we'll talk about sardines. Now, I know many of you have shared with me you're not a fan of sardines, but I highly recommend that you buy one can one time and try them, see if you like them. If you don't, try using them in the recipe that I share, oh gosh, m m must be about a year or two ago, I shared a recipe with you here on YouTube where I made a, a little mixture of sardines and olive oil and lemon and herbs. It's really tasty. And I was so proud because so many of you said you gave it a try and you wound up finding that you liked it. And it was a great way to get sardines into your diet. 
so keep that in mind. I'll be sure to link to that recipe, uh, but it's actually very tasty. But I pick these up. Uh, now these are in mustard. Now, if you didn't like them in mustard, you could always rinse the mustard off, but they were a good price because they were 86 cents. And I haven't, the sardines tend to be a little closer to a dollar or maybe even above a dollar most of the time. So for 86 cents, I thought this was a good buy. And in mustard, I think they'll be tasty. And the reason that I picked this can was the other, they did have other varieties, but I didn't like the ingredients. Uh, the ones that were packed in oil were packed in soybean oil. And that is definitely an oil that I don't like to eat. It's very inflammatory. It's a very highly processed oil. And the more you can avoid soybean oil, the better. So for 86 cents for a can of sardines, I did feel that was a good buy. Now these cans of tuna, I have to tell you, I was really impressed. These are five ounces and this one was 77 cents. That's the least expensive I've ever seen to, you know, at least over the last few months or so that I have seen a five ounce can of tuna sell for. And this is the chunk light tuna and it's packed in water. And I always prefer to buy the chunk light over the albacore because I believe the chunk light has less mercury in it. This also states on the can that it's dolphin safe, so that's a good thing. And basically all it is is tuna, water, and vegetable broth with salt. So this is very nice. There aren't any of the chemicals that you sometimes see added into cans of tuna. Now this is another can of chunk light tuna. This is also five ounces and it is packaged by the same company that did the, the original chunk light we just talked about. The only difference is this can was 95 cents, but that's really just a few pennies more than the 77 cents. And it seems like it's well worth it because not only is this dolphin safe, it's wild caught. It's what's referred to as pole and line caught. And I know to some people that's very important uh, that the tuna is sus sustainably caught. And so I thought for 95 cents, for five ounces, something like a wild caught tuna uh, at most grocery stores is probably going to be over $2 a can. So for 95 cents, and again, just like this one, the ingredients are very simple. It's like tuna, water, vegetable broth, salt, and that's it. So either one that you would go with, they're both under a dollar for five ounces of tuna. That's an exceptionally good buy. Well, now let's take a minute to talk about canned chicken. Back in the day, which was maybe a few months ago, I was able to find things like this for $2 a can. I don't think we're going to see $2 a can on stuff like this anytime soon. Uh, but this was $2.45 at Aldi, and I thought that was a pretty good price given what I've been seeing canned chicken go for lately. And this is the chicken breast, so it's going to be a very nice high quality of canned chicken when you open it. And for $2.45, it is worth it having it on your, on your pantry shelf because you can do a lot with this uh, in terms of making a meal. And it can really help you preserve uh, any fresh whole chickens that you have that you might have in your freezer rather than going into defrosting that and making a whole meal using that chicken you could just use this can of chicken to do a chicken soup. Maybe you've got some leftover uh, chicken carcass and you've made a chicken bone broth and you're gonna use that bone broth to make a soup, but you've basically used up all of uh, the chicken meat that you had from the chicken that you roasted and you know you used every little scrap of it, but you still have some wonderful bone broth and you wanna make a soup, you can add a can of this. And for $2.45, uh, you're still gonna have a very affordable meal. You can fill that soup out with some of your canned veggies or frozen veggies or fresh veggies if you have them, some rice and some pasta. Use all these meal extenders, some maybe diced tomatoes, uh, canned tomatoes, whatever you have. And that can really help stretch and fill that soup uh, for not a lot of money, yet something that you're going to uh, serve that's going to be very filling, especially if maybe you've got some fermented veggies on the side that you've made homemade, 
for like a little salad, like a little Italian giardiniera that I really enjoy. And maybe you've made a, a loaf of homemade bread, which you can make. I show you how to make a, a homemade sandwich bread that's real light and fluffy and everybody tends to really like it. You can make that for a whole loaf. You make two loaves for about 50 cents. So as you see, stretching meals, filling them with foods that are less expensive yet still nourishing and, and uh, nobody's going to leave the table hungry. That's always very important to me. Next, I want to talk about this wild Alaska pink salmon. And I mentioned it earlier when I was talking about making a nice salmon uh, pasta dish. This was such a good buy. You're going to be so surprised. This is 14.75 ounces and it was only $3.19. And it's wild caught salmon. I have seen things similar to this as high as $7.99 a can at my local grocery store. Now on the back here, they're saying there's five servings in this can, which would be three ounce servings. And you might say, oh my gosh, maybe I would think of that as maybe two servings. But again, you use your meal extenders and you serve this with rice or pasta, tomatoes, different things like that, so that you're stretching the amount of protein that you have in the meal, that everybody does at least get some protein, but that you're not overdoing it and really busting the budget. And remember, whenever you're serving protein, if in the recipe you've incorporated some bone broth, or maybe you can serve it on the side as like a little sipping broth, bone broth is a protein sparer. Bone broth is, bone, <laughs> bone broth is high in protein, but it also helps you absorb every little bit of ounce of protein from what from whatever other protein is in the meal so you maximize the absorption of protein whenever you introduce bone broth into a meal so for three dollars and 19 cents if you see this at your aldi i would stock up on this i would definitely buy a couple of cans of this and make sure you have this on your pantry because i don't know how long we're going to see prices like this as i said this things like this are a lot more expensive at my grocery store now I have to tell you, of course, being in Texas, you know, we always see a lot of refried beans on the menu at Mexican restaurants and even in our homes, you know, serving it with tortillas and things like that. And I was so impressed. I know I'm saying that a lot, but I really was very impressed because they had at Aldi, they had traditional refried beans and these have very limited ingredients and the fat that's used in them is lard. So that truly is traditional refried beans. And I really like to see lard used when making refried beans, as opposed to some of your fake fats or your damaged fats or different ingredients that can be added in and the list becomes really long. And whenever you look at the back of a can of refried beans, it should be a very short list and it should be all foods that are real foods and easy to pronounce. Basically, this has beans, <laughs> refried beans, some water, some onion powder, some garlic powder, salt, lard. That's it. This was a good buy. And the reason I'm saying it was a good buy, this was 80 cents. I have never seen refried beans in a can made traditionally with lard for 80 cents. You're getting protein, you're getting carbohydrates, and you're getting fats. This is a one-stop shop. And these are basically the same exact thing. The only thing in this fat-free version is they've left out the lard. And I've not opened these and tried these yet. However, if they were a little on the dry side, you could just add a little water to thin them out. But I think that this is an exceptionally good buy for 80 cents. Protein, fat, carbohydrates, a little bit of everything, and always a nice thing to serve if you've got some maybe homemade tortillas. I also picked up a can of this corned beef hash. It was $1.69, which is price competitive, but I like the fact that it had very limited ingredients. Sometimes the hash that I see in the can at my grocery store has a little longer list of ingredients and some of the things I'm not a fan of, and whether I'm keeping it from my pantry or passing it on to someone else, I really like to always try to provide food for either those that I'm feeding or those that I'm giving food to uh, in the sense of like a blessing box or something like that. I like to give at least like the highest quality and the more traditional or the more real food as I can. And so when I looked on the back of this, I was very impressed. This is basically beef, potatoes, water, and salt. You can't go wrong. 
So having a couple of cans of this particular brand of corned beef hash on your pantry shelf from Aldi, I think is definitely worth doing. Category nine, quick meals. And in this case, mac and cheese. Now I definitely like to make mac and cheese homemade and I've got a couple of recipes that I've shared with you all in the past. But again, having some as backup on your pantry shelves is always a smart idea. To give you an example, last Christmas, between Christmas and New Year's, I was sick. It's rare that I get sick, but every once in a while it does happen. And my husband will kind of have to fend for himself a little. Now he's excellent at making scrambled eggs and toast, but he also likes mac and cheese and it's just a really nice comfort food for him. And having something on our pantry shelf that's in a box and is easy for him to prepare is definitely a wonderful thing to have, especially things like canned soups and whatnot. So if you have family members that may not cook a lot and may rely on you to cook a lot, having some backup foods like this that they can prepare easily either if you do become sick or if you're just away from home for whatever the case may be they've got something that they can make easily and quickly now this I thought was a very good buy this box has nine and a half ounces in it and it's deluxe <laughs> I got a kick out of that deluxe uh, it's also of that simply nature line and it's organic and I got a box of the elbows as well as a box of the shells. And these were originally $2.35 for each box. However, at Aldi, the day I was there, they were on sale for $1.99. That's a good buy for organic mac and cheese in a box this size. Now, although this is less, this is only six ounces, it was less expensive. This was $1.19. Now, it's not organic, but Annie's does offer a very nice brand of mac and cheese. Sometimes she has organic, sometimes she has the non-organic. But either way, I think that this cooks up to be a lovely mac and cheese, and I think it's better than some of the other lines of mac and cheese. But the reason why I liked this and the reason that I bought this, as the name says, Mac and Extreme Cheese, this has more cheese in it than this. And because it has more cheese, it has more protein. So per serving, this has 11 grams of protein, which is fantastic, while this has nine grams of protein per serving. But I felt either one was a good buy and would bring some nutrition to the table, so to speak. So for $1.99 on sale or $1.19 regular price, either of these are a great thing to keep on your pantry shelf. Now, after we talk about this, I do have some bonus items I wanna share with you that were exceptionally good buys and a few of the perishable items that I bought for my fridge and freezer that also were excellent buys. Category 10, sandwich fixins. I don't know about you, but I love a peanut butter and jam sandwich, and really any jam makes me happy. Now, yes, I have plenty of videos here where I show you how to make homemade jam and how to home can it, and you can water bath can homemade jam, which makes it very easy, and it's wonderful for beginners, and my videos take you step by step through the entire process. However, like with everything, I do enjoy having store-bought jams on my pantry shelf for backup. And whenever I find jams like this, I always consider them a good buy and something that I do want to purchase. For example, this is made with 75% fruit. And that's what I always do whenever I'm looking at buying jams at the store. I always first check what is the first ingredient. If the first ingredient is not fruit, I put it right back on the shelf. I only want to bring jams and jellies, whatever the case may be, into my home that put fruit as the first ingredient. And these are wonderful. They put fruit as the first ingredient, and then sugar, no high fructose corn syrup, and pectin. They're very simple. And this is a 9.9 five ounce jar, almost a 10 ounce jar. So it's a good sized jar of jam and packed with fruit. And best of all, this was $2.15. Again, that's hard to beat. I don't even think I could make this homemade for that price because you have to factor in not only buying the fruit, maybe you're growing the fruit, which is great, or maybe you're buying it in bulk at the farmer's market, or maybe you're going on one of those ones where you pick your, those adventures where you pick your own fruit. 
even then, uh, by the time you have the sugar and by the, well, the time and effort, you know, to make it and to home can it, $2.15 is hard to beat. And this has a nice long shelf life. Uh, their best buy date or sell by date, whatever you would call it, uh, on here is through the end of 2023. Uh, but unopened in a cool, dark place, this is going to last a lot longer than that. So not only is it perfect for your working pantry, jams like this are perfect for your extended or prepper pantry. And they had a nice selection of flavors. Here I've got blackberry. I love blackberry jam. And then here I've got the all-time, I think, <laughs> favorite among so many people, strawberry jam. And then this third one is raspberry jam. Raspberry, my husband really enjoys raspberry jam. So that is an excellent selection of flavors that they offered. Now, they did have organic jam. However, it was a little more expensive, to be expected, uh, for organic, and I understand that. But when I looked at the ingredients on the back, guess what was first? Sugar. So I definitely didn't want to buy that to pay more money for something that starts with sugar as opposed to fruit, even though the fruit was organic. I would rather buy something like this that even though it's not organic, fruit is the first ingredient. Now this again was their Simply Nature line and it was organic and this is a creamy peanut butter so to go perfect with your jam. And what I liked about this particular peanut butter, it was unsweetened or is unsweetened. And basically all the ingredients are organic pe peanuts and sea salt. And for $3.89, I thought that this was a good buy. Now the oil, may, you might be able to see the oil on top is, uh, the oil is sitting right on top. That's a very natural peanut butter and you will have to stir it, but I never mind that. I always prefer uh, peanut butters that are left in their, natural in their natural state and have the oil float to the top. I don't want them to be adding anything in, whether it's sugar or other emulsifiers, to try to keep the oil uh, blended in with the peanuts. So when you see something like that, that is always a good indication that it is a very natural peanut butter. Now they did have a non-organic peanut butter and it was about half the price, so it was a real bargain. I think it was about $1.98, something like that. However, it did have sugar added to it. And I think it had a few other ingredients. And so I wasn't too impressed with that. And so I decided the little extra money for a peanut butter that's so natural like this was well worth it. So I felt this was a fair price, but also check your Walmart because Walmart has some very good prices on organic peanut butter as well. And they also have some good prices on non-organic peanut butter, but that is very natural. It's just like peanuts and salt. Now a few fun bonus items to share with you that I found in my travels at Aldi. And one was these wonderful windmill cookies. These are such delicious spice cookies. I don't know if you've ever had these before, but I don't make anything like this. And normally we'll find these at Christmas time. We didn't have them this past Christmas. And when I saw them at Aldi, they were in that sort of special deal aisle that has all the things that are just sort of one-time deals or clearance deals or their Aldi deals, I think they call them and everything sort of put together in one aisle there's food there's toys there's you know bedding there's all kinds of things in the in the Aldi deals aisle and I couldn't resist picking these up they've got wonderful ingredients uh, very simple uh, basically a cinnamon spice cookie and this whole bag was only 99 cents and this is over 21 ounces. This is over a pound of cookies uh, that basically have simple ingredients and they're tasty. My family likes them. They'll enjoy them, especially since they got gypped this Christmas. I, don't, I think with my being sick, I didn't get a chance to kind of add in some of the normal goodies that I bring home uh, from the grocery store at Christmas time. So they'll have fun with those. And for 99 cents, and they're not expiring anytime soon, you can't beat that deal. So if you like these and you see something like this in your Aldi aisle, in the oldie deals aisle, definitely pick them up. And you know, just speaking of that aisle, I would imagine maybe it's a little different at every Aldi, I'm not sure. Uh, but that Aldi Deals aisle is really good. That's where I found the cherries for $2.99. Uh, they've got a lot of good things in that aisle. 
The next thing I have to share with you is the good bargain that I got on this dark chocolate. Now I'm not familiar with this brand, but I'm confident that it's going to be pretty good. And it was only $1.99. And I really thought that was a good deal because these packages are 4.4 ounces versus a lot of the chocolate packages that you often see at different grocery stores are 3.5 ounces and they're more than $1.99 or $1.99. So I felt for the larger amount, this was a good buy, but there was something even better that I liked about this was that there are five servings in here and each serving is individually wrapped. How nice is that? It's going to stay very fresh even after you open the box because the foil that you're opening is just going to open your one piece and then the others are going to stay wrapped. So I couldn't pass this up for $1.99. And you know, chocolate, it's so nutritious. It's very high in magnesium, uh, which is wonderful for our heart, relaxes our blood vessels and our nerves and helps us sleep. Chocolate does a lot of good things. Uh, so dark for 85% cocoa on here, like cacao. Sometimes you hear people say, you know, 85% cacao, or sometimes you'll hear cocoa. Uh, but uh, I thought for 85%, you can't beat that. And you know, the darker the chocolate, the better, because it has more of those nutrients that are so good for us. And I love the fact that chocolate is good. <laughs> Uh, this one was a 70% dark, so I thought I would try try them both. I will confess I like the seven in general when it comes to chocolate. Uh, the darkest that I like to go for a treat is 70%, but if I feel like, oh, I should be giving myself a lot of uh, uh, some more of the healthy nutrients that are in chocolate, I'll eat the 85%. And they also had dark sea salt. And if you've ever had the chocolate with the sea salt, sometimes Lint, I think, has a brand of it. It's very tasty. So I'm hoping that this will be equally tasty. But for a 4.4 ounce package and each of the pieces individually wrapped for $1.99, I couldn't pass this up. And they had this Simply Nature brand of flax seeds. And these are the whole flax seeds. And if you've seen my superfoods video, flax seeds is one of the things that I talk about. And this was only $2.99. You can't beat that price for flax seeds. And this is a one pound bag of flax seeds. And it's the seeds that you want to look for because you don't want to buy the ground flaxseed meal because the oils in flaxseed are very perishable. They're good for us. They're what help turn into omega-3s in our body, like the fats that are in salmon that you often hear are very good for our hearts. Uh, but the uh, oils in flax seeds, as I said, are very, they, they can spoil very quickly once you've ground them into a meal. So you always want to stock the, the, the seeds. You want to buy the seeds and you want to keep them in your freezer or your fridge. You can definitely keep them while the bag is still sealed like this on your pantry shelf, but you can extend the life by putting them in your refriger refrigerator or freezer and then you can just grind them up, sprinkle them on your cereal, add them to your baked goods, uh, people will sometimes mix a little flaxseed meal with some water and use it as an egg substitute when baking. So there's a lot that you can do with flax seeds. And these are the brown flax seeds as opposed to the golden flax seeds. And I believe the brown flax seeds are considered slightly more nutritious than the gold flax seeds. Now this is a selection of the perishables that I found at Aldi and I thought they had some excellent prices. Now, I want to mention before we go over these that all these did have eggs that were comparably priced with Walmarts. They were large eggs, and I think they were about $1.98, $1.99 uh, for a dozen. That's very close in price to what I found at Walmart. They also had milk, but they were running a special on the milk, and it was a gallon of milk, whole milk, and I believe it was uh, $2 and change, which was a fantastic buy and it was only pasteurized. It wasn't ultra pasteurized. So whenever I'm looking at milk to buy in the grocery store, if I don't have my usual supply of raw milk, I always try to find milk that has only been pasteurized and not ultra pasteurized. And the reason is the less pasteurized it is, the more nutrition is retained in the milk. But if you wanted to buy the milk, you were limited to only six gallons of milk. Because I guess some people will put it in their freezer or whatnot when it's such a good price like that. 
They were also selling butter, and I think it was a little over three dollars uh, for four sticks of butter. And it looked like a nice butter, but then I turned on the back and I saw that it just wasn't cream and salt. It also contained natural flavors or something like that. And I thought, hmm, I, I don't really want butter that has something in addition to just cream and salt or just cream for your unsalted butter. And they were limiting that to four, but the price was comparable to what I've seen at Walmart as well as my grocery store. So I didn't really feel that that was anything that was necessary to buy, especially since it had an ingredient in it that I didn't really want. But something that I was pleasantly surprised about, and those of you who like organic chickens, I think will be pleasantly surprised as well, that uh, Aldi was carrying a whole organic chickens labeled $2.69 a pound. And not only in addition to being organic, uh, this is free ranged and it's hatched, raised and harvested in the USA. It has no added hormones, no added steroids and no added salt. So this is a very nice chicken for $2.69 a pound. Generally, uh, in the past, I've seen organic chickens like this, of this quality, for $2.99 a pound. And given everything that's going on with chickens right now, $2.69 for an organic chicken or $2.69 for an organic chicken is an exceptionally good price. And as a matter of fact, when I was shopping the other day, I noticed that at least locally in the area where I live, uh, organic chickens had jumped from $2.99 a pound to $3.99 a pound. So if you live near an Aldi and you see whole chickens for organic whole chickens for $2.69 a pound, that's a really good buy. Now, yes, the non-organic ones you can find at Walmart uh, in around the 94 cents a pound range. If you can still find that, I've seen some of them creeping up to over a dollar a pound, a dollar 12 a pound, a dollar 15 a pound. But again, those are non-organic. Uh, for an organic chicken, this was uh, per pound. This was an exceptionally good buy, based on what I've seen in my area. They also had ground turkey in the frozen section, and this was a dollar ninety-nine. And this is one pound, and it's eighty-five percent lean, fifteen percent fat, which that's about the ratio I like. Uh, that way, it's kind of moist, not too dry. And this was very similar, uh, just a different brand, but very similar to what I found at Walmart and it's relatively natural. There's really not any uh, particularly unusual ingredients other than basically turkey in here. And for $1.99, I thought it was a good buy, but again, that was comparable to what I could find at Walmart. What I've got over here are some frozen veggies. I've got the mixed veggies. I always like having these on hand. Uh, they, they're very easy to add to a soup or something like that. And I've also got some frozen peas. I love having frozen peas on hand. Again, you know, they have protein. You can mix them with rice and make a nice colorful side dish or just toss them with butter and serve them as is. Uh, but these are 12 ounce bags, just like the frozen bags of veggies that I find at Walmart that are also 12 ounce bags. And I, as I said, you know, with some of the things like the coffee and whatnot, a lot of things that used to be 16 ounces are shrinking down to 12 ounces, but the price is not shrinking down. So you have to be alert to the fact that you know you're not getting a pound. Uh, but again, uh, size-wise, these were comparable uh, to Walmart, but they were a better buy. Each of these was 79 cents a bag, and that was uh, a few pennies or more less than what I would pay at Walmart for frozen veggies. Now this is plain yogurt, and I was impressed with this because it is a whole milk yogurt. As I said, it's plain. It's their Simply Nature line, and it was organic, or it is organic, and it was only $2.99. That's a pretty good buy. Now you could strain this, and this is 32 ounces of yogurt, so this is, the, as you see, the big container for $2.99. You could strain this and make sort of a mock homemade cream cheese that I've shown you how to do uh, in a previous video. And then you have the whey, which is a very probiotic rich beverage. It's wonderful to drink. You can also save it and use it to bake with. It'll help make baked goods very tender. So there's a lot that you can do with this. And once you have this, you can take some of this yogurt and you can uh, culture it and make your own homemade yogurt. I also have a video where I show you how to do that. You don't need any special equipment. You, all you need is a bowl. 
<laughs> and you can make your own homemade uh, your own homemade yogurt uh, with a bowl and some milk and a little bit of this yogurt. And then you culture that milk. Now you have your homemade yogurt. And homemade yogurt is always going to be richer in the good bacteria, the probiotics, than anything that's been sitting on the shelf. Uh, so I really encourage you to start making your own homemade yogurt. And once you make it, you never have to buy this again because you will just always reserve a little bit of your homemade yogurt and you'll use that to make your next batch of homemade yogurt. And there's so much you can do with yogurt. So I mean, it's wonderful to top on a lot of things. It's wonderful to mix with cereal, granolas, things like that. But as I mentioned, you can also turn it into some things uh, like a Greek yogurt or a homemade mock cream cheese. So for $2.99 to buy this and even you know save some uh, to mix with your milk that you start making yogurt with uh, and eat the rest or strain it, do whatever you want, $2.99 it can't be beat. And one other thing I want to mention about yogurt, even if you decide not to make your own homemade yogurt, I do always recommend to buy plain whole milk yogurt, just yogurt not Greek yogurt. And the reason is Greek yogurt is often more expensive, but you can take regular yogurt and strain it and turn it into Greek yogurt. And then you get the whey. If you buy Greek yogurt, you're being gypped of the whey. And the whey is so nutritious and where all the good bacteria is. So I always recommend just buy your plain yogurt and then turn it into whatever you want. And also, like many of you have shared with me, depending on where you live, all you have been able to find is ultra pasteurized milk. And you worry about that because you wish you could get raw milk, but that's not necessarily an option. And you would even be happy to settle for pasteurized milk. But even that's not an option. And all you can get in your local grocery store in your area is ultra pasteurized milk. But that's the good news about yogurt because if you can, you can even take that ultra pasteurized milk and you can turn it into yogurt. And it's very easy to do because it's always already been heated so high that all you need to do is basically warm it up to 110 degrees, which is the temperature that the good bacteria in yogurt likes in order to culture. And you can restore some nutrition to what's been stripped from that milk through the ultra pasteurization process. So all good news when you've got some milk, regardless of what type of milk it is and some yogurt, you can always be working to uh, re-energize, so to speak, any foods that may have been somewhat denatured by some processing process <laughs> and put nutrition back into it. Alrighty, now I have to talk to you about these cheeses because I am just so excited about these cheeses and you have got to look for this if you like cheese and you have an Aldi in your area. First of all, this is just a basic block of cheese. They did have extra sharp, so I was very happy to see that because we really like extra sharp cheese. And this is a good Wisconsin cheese, and it's basically a, with very simple ingredients, like so many of the things that I found at Aldi. Now this was $1.85, which is very comparable to the price for a block of cheese like this. This is an eight ounce block of cheese. And this was comparable in price to what I've seen at Walmart, as well as my own grocery store. Uh, so not like the buy of the century, uh, but still a good quality cheese. And if you're shopping at Aldi and Aldi's what's near to you versus a, a Walmart or something like this is more expensive at your local grocery store, I think you can get something uh, this is a very good price for an eight ounce block of cheese, regardless of where you find it. A dollar eighty-five can't be beat. And as I said, very minimal ingredients. You've got milk, you've got cheese cultures, of course, you're going to need those. You've got some salt and you've got some microbial enzymes, which also help with the culturing process. And then they've simply added uh, the annatto vegetable coloring. And annatto was not bad. It, as it says, it's a vegetable coloring. It's an unusual uh, vegetable. Uh, I, and I, you know, it's funny, they say annatto vegetable. I believe it's a vegetable, somewhat of a tropical uh, ingredient, but it's been used for years and it's what imparts the orange color to cheese. So it's nothing to worry about or be concerned about. So if you can find an eight ounce block of cheese like this, especially a sharp cheddar, which I'm sure is going to have a nice flavor, whether at Aldi or Walmart or your local grocery store, this is a good thing to have in your fridge because this is very versatile. You can use this with your pastas uh, to make macaroni and cheese with a little flour. You just do butter and, and uh, the flour to make a little roux 
and put, add in your cheese and some milk or cream or even water in a pinch and you can make a nice cheese sauce and you have mac and cheese in no time. Now these are really nice English cheeses and I was surprised to see things like this at Aldi. Each one of these was originally $3.89 but they were on clearance for $2.72. These are made in England. This particular one is a cave aged cheddar. For that price, I was really impressed. And it's a little over five ounces. This is a vintage English cheddar. And this is what they're calling a rustic red cheddar. And something that's cute, it talks about how these are made by one of the oldest cheesemakers in England, specifically cheddar cheesemakers, and in Cheddar England. And they're even made from the milk from cows that are grass-fed and free of hormones. So for $2.72 each, I definitely took one of each because my family loves cheese and I just think cheese and crackers is such an easy little thing to serve uh, when people are really hungry and waiting for dinner or just sort of a mid-afternoon snack. Nothing like some cheese and crackers or cheese and fruit and cheeses like this, this is so high quality. I think you'd pay a lot more for something like this. Now this cheese was $3.59. It's a little expensive, you know, for a square of cheese like this, but it is seven ounces and it's an Irish cheddar cheese. And I have seen this at my grocery store, if not this exact brand, something similar, an Irish cheddar cheese in a green wrapper. And it's more expensive than $3.59. And I've always wanted to try it. And sometimes you might find it at places like Costco or Sam's Club, uh, these mature Irish cheddars, and they're in sort of big blocks. But sometimes it can be hard to finish something like that uh, if you have a small family. And certain cheeses don't always freeze well and then defrost all that well. So I was happy to find something about this size and something that I felt was fairly priced for seven ounces of a mature Irish cheddar for $3.59. Now, if you'd like to learn more about stocking your pantry, your Four Corners pantry, your Prepper pantry as well, and how to do it on a limited budget, but to still have it be real food, nutritious food, be sure to click on this playlist over here where I have those types of videos and more, including how to best store your food to preserve it for as long as possible. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.